welcome everybody in this video we are talking about frigid zone frigid zone for social studies class 5 cbsc now we have seen the whole earth can be divided into three different zones based on the temperature the area near the equator equator to the tropic of cancer or tropic of capricorn and tropic of capricorn to the arctic circle or antarctic circle antarctic circle to the north pole or this um, south pole so this imaginary lines which we call as latitudes or parallels help us divide the earth into three different zones now what you see the pictures in this is the auroras auroras are the special type of diffused bands of light caused by electromagnetism between or by the reaction of the solar storms the storms from the sun that comes and hits the atmospheric gases of the earth the next picture on the right is nothing but the snow covered mountains of the north and south poles and what you see below is the, our good old walrus the animals of the frigid zone okay now arctic circle to north pole that is 66.5 degree north to 90 degree north is a north frigid zone antarctic circle to south pole or 66.5 degree south to 90 degree south latitude is the south frigid zone the characteristics of the frigid zone is limited heat and light because the sun's rays come with a slanting and at a distance and are not strong enough you have long summers and winters and you have continuous days or nights these are the main feature the countries that are existing in these uh, frigid zones are alaska and canada to a certain extent greenland and iceland mostly not populated scandinavia sparsely populated russia and siberia very very little population these are in the north frigid zone south frigid zone is fully covered by the continent called antarctica the white continent the largest continent with no permanent living beings there the human life there are only settlers explorers researchers and expedition people and very little permanent life is possible in the south pole area the antarctica <clears throat> the flora and fauna of the frigid zone animal life the animals of the frigid zone these are the yaks the yaks and osmus are somewhat similar they have very thick hairy skin or fur to take care of the cold you have the penguins the dolphins etc then you have the arctic hare arctic fox and you have the main important thing the vehicle of the christmas santa claus reindeer so reindeer is the popular animal of the arctic then you have the polar bear arctic fox arctic hare walrus and seals yak yak or the musk ox arctic tern is snow owl or the popular birds thick white fur is a characteristic of all these animals thick fur most of them are white fur you have something like black fur or reindeer has different colors black brown or white thick white fur is mostly found and when snow melts the fur color changes to brown so during the cold winter part it is in thick white color camouflaging this is what we call as camouflaging c a m o u f l a g e c a m o u f l a g e camouflages to change the color to suit the environment you have certain lizards change the color of the stem or change to the color of the leaves in the normal habitat likewise these are white color during snow time and brown color during the period when the snow melts these are the characteristics of the animals of the wildlife of the arctic area the arctic tern snow owl the ermine hare fox um bear reindeer musk ox etc these are the only few animals that are having adaptation to survive to the extreme cold climate these animals have adaptation to survive to the extreme cold climate apart from these sometimes you find a certain type of fish and you also have whales seals and walruses these are the animal life coming to plant life very few plants grow near the poles because they are covered with snow all around the year when you come closer to arctic circle and antarctic circle you do find certain vegetation what you see in the first picture here these are the arctic willows known for their leaves and flowers and colors there are almost no trees in the frigid zone there are very, very limited vegetables grown with great difficulty by the people who settle there the nomadic tribes of the frigid zones the frigid zones are home to lot of berries you have the blueberry you have the blackberry you have the cranberry all the berries are there 
it is because lots of blackberry is there in the arctic zone and because canada is in arctic zone we have the phone company blackberry from canada so you have blueberry blackberry cranberry you have the arctic willow almost no trees and limited vegetables when you go closer to the poles away from the arctic and antarctic circle what you have is only mosses lichens and grasses you have only mosses lichens and grasses the plants in the arctic zone if somebody asks it will be very simple answer is mosses lichens and grasses are there very few flower bearing plants like arctic willow and still fewer fruit bearing shrubs like berry blackberry blueberry cranberries are found and these uh, uh, flower bearing plants or berry bearing plants are found closer to arctic and antarctic circle and closer to the poles you have very little vegetation you also have wild currant tasty small fruits wild currants the most important feature of the polar region or the frigid zone is the polar lights the polar lights are also called auroras what is an aurora there are two types of auroras aurora borealis and aurora australis b o r e a l i s borealis and a u s p r a l i s australis borealis and australis what is it? the borealis is a northern light australis is a southern light what is it these are bands of colored light green red yellow etc bands of colored light that are seen in the sky mostly at night these are bands of colored light seen in the sky mostly at night these are natural electric phenomena natural light natural electric phenomena that creates bright and colorful displays bright and colorful displays these are bands of light these are diffusions of light particles patches of light so patches of light diffusion of light particles natural electric phenomena creating bands of bright colorful light display is called polar lights or auroras in the northern hemisphere it is called aurora borealis in the southern hemisphere it is called aurora australis how is this caused or why is this caused the electrically charged particles from the solar wind enter the earth's atmosphere and interact with the gases in the atmosphere the electrically charged particles of or from the solar wind interact with the gases of the earth's atmosphere and this causes patches of diffusion of light particles creating a colorful bright phenomena so this happens mostly at night and these are bands of colored light these are the auroras this is a speciality of the north and south frigid zones coming to the temperature the sun's rays barely reach the frigid zone both the north and south frigid zone are far away from the equator and the sun's rays are also reaching slantingly if you see in the picture the light it will take more time to travel here from the sun to here it is longer and sun here it is shorter so in equator the sun's light will fall faster so it is warm and hot and lot of light in the poles it is not warm it is not hot it is not lot of light it is limited light point 1 point 2 the earth is rotating on a slanted axis the tilted axis 23 and a half degree from the perpendicular or 66 and a half 0.5 degree from the planar axis so this tilting of the earth's axis causes a special situation where the north pole receives sunlight while south pole does not receive sunlight so when the north pole receives sunlight we call this as the summer for the northern hemisphere when this is summer for the northern hemisphere you have continuous daylight and long summer six month long summer and here it is winter six month long winter and dark days dark days or dark night means what the days are very short one minute or two minute will be the day and 23 and a half hours will be the night here the days are long 23 and a half hour will be the day and you will have 10 to 14 minutes of night that means these the sun never sets that means the summer of the northern hemisphere will have days of midnight sun that is why alaska canada and all is called land of midnight sun so because of the tilted axis of the earth the north pole receives more sunlight during summer of the northern hemisphere while south pole receives almost no sunlight so winter here long continuous nights summer here long continuous days the days are long long enough to be 24 hours almost so what happens when we say sun never sets there is a very little twilight hours on the time when we feel sun should have set so it is neither sunrise 
nor it is sunset nor it is day nor it is dark so there is a continuous light so this is a feature of the polar region so sun rays reach which is slant so it's not hot enough winters are severe minus 40 degrees centigrade so winters are severe minus 40 degrees centigrade summers are maximum 12 degrees so it will be 3 to 5 degrees it will start on the lower side and the higher side maximum is 12 degrees centigrade for summer and this summer will also last only for 2 3 months it will not last for long and then you have continuous you have either continuous daylight during the summer or continuous absence of sunlight during the winter so you have continuous day land of midnight sun or continuous night how much rain will be there 15 to 30 cm rain that means it is around 10 to 12 inches of rain snow melts but ice cap remains as it is snow melts ice cap remains as it is so this is the um, axis or tilter this is what we call as continuous day this is a summer of the northern hemisphere and this is winter of the southern hemisphere when you have it is almost night you don't see the sun you have a little bit of light so it will appear as if it is twilight so this is what we call as continuous day or continuous night that is the day becomes longer and night becomes shorter during summer longer to the extent that it is almost day all through the day now comes the lifestyle of the people do people live very few people live very very few once upon a time when the earth was a pangaea and not different continents probably people believe the north america and the um, what we call today as scandinavia and russia and all the eurasian continent and north american continent had some land connection people believe maybe dinosaurs and other big mammals used to travel from one part of the earth to another people believe the changes in temperature caused them to go to new places searching for uh, acceptable habitat but now the earths are all disconnected the continents are disconnected so very few people today we have living in the frigid zones the popular tribes are called inuit i n u i t i n u i t is a popular tribe whom we believe are the ancestral people who used to live in the i n u i t who used to live in the frigid zone because the climate is very harsh because the summers are very short because the winters are long because the nights are long because the heat is not there because plantation is not there because of good enough uh, animals are not there food is scarce agriculture is not possible very little vegetable can be grown all these difficulties cause life living difficult it's harsh but still people live how do they live they live by hunting maybe they hunt the reindeer they live by trapping they trap the arctic hare they live by herding they herd the reindeer they live by fishing there are certain fishes which are available the surface of the earth there is the snow but under that there will be water in that fishes will be there so they catch the fish now how they catch the fish they has a certain type of arrow or spear tied to a leather rope leather made of yak skin or reindeer skin or whatever this arrow or spear tied to rope is thrown with a great speed and it is very sharp it goes and hits the prey and kills it could be fish it could be hare it could be whatever and then they pull the rope and it comes back with them along with the prey this is called a harpoon this is a special instrument they use and then when it snow is not so hard when it is little thought it is watery plus snowy they use a small boat where only one person can be accommodated as a means of transport these are called kayaks so what you see here is a kayak what you see here is a harpoon what you see here is an igloo this is a type of house that the eskimos or the igloo inuits used to build once upon a time using the snow that is available in the frigid zone in the polar region to build their own house though this is made of house inside the house it used to be warm and then they also used to make light and make heat by burning seal oil seal is an animal that is found in the water there so this is about the lifestyle of the inuits or the eskimos now what are the types of tribes that live there inuits were found in canada and greenland now there are very few inuits people have been absorbed into the current new popular developed civilization yupik inuit and athabaskan are the other tribes that were found in alaska laps are the arctic tribes in scandinavia samoyeds are found in siberia and russia chukchi or koryak or the people who live in the peninsula in and around the okhotsk sea in siberia yakuts are the people who live in siberia so yakut chukchi samoyed laps 
Inuit or the names of different tribes INUIT, LAPP, SAMOYD, CHUK, CHI, YAKUT these are the different tribes. Now Eskimo is another name we used to call the Inuits. They use the harpoon, they live in igloo, they used to ride kayaks we have seen. Parka or Anorak is the name with which we used to call the dresses that they wear. The picture that you see is a Inuit picture taken recently. It is not a hundred year old picture. Now, so to summarize, we have seen what is a frigid zone. Frigid zone is found between Arctic Circle and North Pole or Antarctic Circle and South Pole in the Northern Hemisphere or the Southern Hemisphere. Southern frigid zone and Northern frigid zone. The countries that lie in frigid zone are Canada, Alaska, Scandinavia, Greenland, Iceland, Siberia, Russia, etc. In southern frigid zone, we have only Antarctica, no countries are there. It is very cold and snow melts, but the ice remains as it is. Summer is only lasting only 2 to 3 months. The temperature, the rain will be around 10 to 15 centimeters. The temperature will be 2 to 3 to 12 degrees maximum in summer, while in winter it will be minus 40 degrees. The phenomenon of the light is called Aurora Borealis or Aurora Australis. These are uh, curtains or bands or streams of light, the diffusion in the night sky caused by the meeting of the solar storm particles, electromagnetically charged particles into the gases of the Earth's atmosphere. Hardly any plants, hardly any animals which can be used as food other than the reindeer or the hare. The, we have only shrubs, mosses and lichens closer to the poles and the closer to the Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circle we may have some flower bearing shrubs and some berries. Animals are caribou or polar bear or yak or etc. Walrus and seals are also found. There are some whales also in the polar seas. Life is difficult or impossible. Some tribes like Inuits, Laps, Samoyeds, Yakuts, Chukchis used to live in the Arctic region. But most of them now today, because of their civilization, have moved to more habitable regions and we have very little nomadic tribes in the Arctic region. So what actually is the importance or significance of the Arctic region is that people, the explorers, go on expedition to see how was life over there. Is there a possibility for a plant or an animal and how the temperature and to learn other things. So what is an expedition? Expedition is a journey going of a group of specialists with a special purpose. A journey organized for the specialist with a particular purpose. Journey organized for the specialist with a particular purpose. What could be that purpose? It could be a scientific exploration. It could be an expedition on a geographical scale. It could be to find out what is happening in the North Pole because of the changes in temperature. So it is it. Expedition is a special journey organized for specialists called explorers with a specific aim. That is it. Thanks for watching this video. Please keep coming back.